here we are then once again with my team on F1 2021. The people have spoken and you didn't really like the idea of the 10 minute F1 series. And you know, having had a few days to reflect, uh, to read your comments, read your feedback, I really do appreciate it. It, it is honestly the most helpful thing and people have been so incredibly supportive of it all recently. I've been trying to, to get to the heart of what you guys really enjoy watching and actually looking at the statistics of that 10 minute video the same sort of trends were in there anyway so it wasn't really improving audience retention if anything it made it slightly worse so we are going to be back to normal cat and good speed content what you come to expect around here full in-depth videos looking at the detail you know uh extensive highlights and uh, you know hopefully enjoyable content so that's what we want to do here so we are going to be doing my team but we're going to be doing it with full length episodes so anywhere up to sort of 45 50 minutes could be the case with this series of course lots of things to look at so here we go then into my team and i do want to do a custom season i still want to do that 10 race aspect of it because you know we're, we're halfway through pretty much the, the game life cycle um you know i want to get through it i want to i want to show you guys something different to what other creators have done so that is what we're doing uh, and we are oops we are going to be uh, editing it as much as possible so of course Imola has been released this week so we will be starting the season in Imola we will be moving to Portugal uh, and then Canada I do want France in there Austria Britain uh, I did want Hungary Belgium don't want Holland Italy in there uh, we don't want Japan I do want the USA and Brazil in there so Oh, so annoying. Oh, no, 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 it hasn't worked. Um, so, Imla, Portugal. We don't want Spain. We do want Canada. We do want France. We want Hungary. Don't want Holland, uh, Japan. We want the USA. And then uh, Brazil. So, it is an 11 race season that I want. That's, that's the ideal. I wish you were allowed that. I don't know why it has to be 22, 16, or 10. Um... And of course, we want to have Jeddah in there at some point as well in the future. Uh, I mean, what are we going to get rid of? It's difficult because I, I love all of these circuits. Um, maybe it has to be USA. Although I love the track. Mm, I don't know. I'm just so torn of which one to get rid of. Uh, yeah, let's go for USA. It pains me to say it, but I think out of all the tracks that are left, that's the one I wanted on there least. So there you go, Imola uh, is going to be opening the season. So that is going to be in today's episode, which I'm really looking forward to trying out Imola. Uh, and in a new team, that is going to be something that is absolutely crazy. I'm going to fiddle around with the sentence and stuff, and I'll see you guys when we get to the livery customation uh, screen. Although, I do want to show you some of the things that I will be doing. Uh, if we go into career settings, I will be reducing the resource rate for um, the player. Uh, and the AI uh, will just stay on default. So, you know, I don't... I, I don't want to be catching up to the AI too quickly in this series, especially because it's only 10 race seasons. We could very quickly um, be on race winning pace, and I don't want to be that. I want uh, want this to be hard work. I want us to have to think about which upgrades we're going for, think about the facilities that we are going to be building. Uh, it's still going to be Nico Hulkenberg leading, leading the team, so that's going to be exciting. Uh, the fault frequency, we'll have that on normal and fault types on high, the highest possible, because I want this to be as immersive as I can. Uh, department event frequency, we'll just have that on default. Uh, facility management on, R&D management on. Um, that all looks good to me, so I'll see you guys at the customization screen. So of course we have picked Nico Hulkenberg. As our driver, so I've went for, with the same settings that I had before. Um, I do want to go for the Lotus style, which is exactly what I went for before. Um, so you can see the suit, a nice black and gold suit there. Uh, our gloves are these special ones, uh, the deluxe edition special gloves there that you can see. 
the character poses, arms folded, podium emote. Uh, I didn't want to do the love heart. Um, what do I want to do? That one looks quite good. That looks like what Nico Hulkenberg would do. Um, would it be a yeehaw? I mean, he wouldn't say any of these things, I don't think. Yeah, we'll go with yeehaw. Okay, That'll boss. do. Let's get this team up and running. First, enter a team name. So, team name is going to be Lotus uh, F1 Mercedes, I think, is what we're going to go for. Because uh, the engine we went for was Mercedes. So, we will go with Mercedes. There we go. That will do. Ah, oh, Can we now have Mercedes in there? Now, no, let's apparently not. Primary sponsor for this season. That's annoying. So, Lotus F1 team, I suppose. That's what we have to go for. I'm sure last year you could put Mercedes in there. Uh, Lotus F1 team, that is fine. Some a larger signing bonus up front. Some are for more weekly income. The better we perform, the more our level will go up as the team gains more acclaim. Do I think last time out we went for the Xenon Dynamics. Be going anywhere fast without a power unit. Obviously, the greater the performance and durability, the better. We're not much of a team without a second driver. Here are the drivers interested in joining our team. Well, what a pity. So and pick someone you think can get us good results. As Dan Tickton is in there. We renew contracts periodically, so you'll have plenty of chances to sign someone else should the need arise. Tempted to go with uh, Giuliano Alesi. Um. You know, just to have that F1 link in there. Looks so, like yeah, can let's get the lazy in there. And Go That's ahead fine. And confirm if you're happy. So, Giuliano uh, Alesi will be our teammate. Mercedes will be our uh, engine uh, provider. And, of course, Xenon Dynamics will let's be our main delivery sponsor. We'll delivery. We can add more sponsors to the cars we signed them throughout the year. And don't worry, we can edit our look at any time from HQ. I absolutely love this livery. So uh, this livery I've sort of edited from the one of the, the the presets, and I think this looks great. It's got the black. It's got subtle hints of gold. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I hope you guys agree, because uh, well, I'm not changing it. <laughs> You've made me change enough of this series. Uh, but there you go. Uh, I think she looks absolutely beautiful. The number 27 there for Nico Hulkenberg, of course. Yeah, can't get any better than that. Uh, and the personal stickers, you can pop your own down on there. And I think the first you have to finish is so good. And it's Michael Schumacher, and I love Michael. Least, we need to consider our brand, our badge, and team colors. So the badge, uh, I went for this one, which is kind of similar to the Lotus one in real life. Certainly the same colors. Um... That's what we've gone for. The team colours, we are going to copy from the livery. Uh, and that's what we're going to go for. So let's get straight into Great. my team. That's everything we need. You can go back and edit anything we've done so far. And we'll come back here at the start of each season. But if you're ready to go, hit advance to head to Team HQ. And we can start our push to the top of Formula 1. So let's head on then. And uh, here we go with the first interview with Will Buxton. You can watch it all this time. I won't cut him out. Hello folks, and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. As you can see, there's no pit lane behind me, and as you can hear, no roar of engines. And that's because they've set me free from the F1 paddock to escape here to the countryside and to the headquarters of Formula One's newest team. Now, it's not every day we get to pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes at an F1 team. Rarer still that we get to talk not only to the team owner, but also the team's lead driver. But what makes this place extra special is that the owner and lead driver are one and the same person. 
Now, it's been an interesting 12 months, and we all know a number of the regulation changes which were due to come into effect this year have been delayed until next. Some, though, are still seeing the light of day, amongst them the all-important budget cap, which gives some of the smaller teams, a little further down the order, potentially the opportunity to compete with the bigger teams. Good for them, but great for us as viewers. But what does our new team owner think about these new rules? Do they see them as a challenge, a hurdle that needs to be overcome? Perhaps they see them as an opportunity to disrupt the status quo, a chance to come out swinging and to carve their name into Formula One history. Well, I had the opportunity to ask them these very questions just earlier today. And here's what they had to say. Okay, so here we are then. Oh, there's Nico. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting us here today. It's been wonderful to see behind the scenes. Uh, as you might expect, I've got about a million questions, so let's jump straight in. It's been a long time since we last saw a team owner take their own car onto the track, and the sport's changed enormously in the intervening years. How are you going to handle the responsibilities of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? Uh, nothing easy is worth doing. I live for challenges. This isn't just about me. This is about the team, and I'm behind them 100%. Together, we're unstoppable. I like that one. Let's talk about your teammate. Now, it's clear they're excited to have signed with you, but tell me, what is it that you think they bring to the team? Um, it was finding the right fit for our team. They understand that we're new and appreciate the opportunity we're providing. The skill set really suits our team. We've seen what they can do on paper. And, uh, the skill set really suits our team. That's so you've good. obviously been putting a lot of work into the car. I know it's early days, but how do you expect it to feel out there? Uh, I think the chassis will be good. I think the Lotus chassis was, was always pretty good. Most of the other teams can boast years of experience in Formula 1. Where do you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains you need to put you within reach of the other cars? Uh, it's going to be tough. We'll have a better picture after the first race. A fresh pair of eyes can find solution other teams haven't seen like that one. Ultimately, your success this season is going to come down to whether you can take positions from the other drivers. What is it about your car that's going to give you that edge in those battles? Overtaking is all about power. And finally, with so many specialist departments working together here at your headquarters, and with such an important deadline coming up, Who's getting that coveted teacher's gold star? Which group do you feel the most proud of right now? I think we got to say the chassis. I think, you know, the engine will take care of itself. It's a Mercedes engine. It's going to be good. Um, the chassis is where we're going to really make the gains. So there you go. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's uh, been wonderful to get an insight from you and, of course, to see around the headquarters. Thank you for today. Really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching as well. We'll see you very soon. Thanks, Will. And uh, now heading towards our first look at the headquarters. And, well, we're already at 13 minutes for this episode. So maybe you were right. Maybe it shouldn't be a 10-minute episode. Um, I, you know, I just wanted to try something different, but uh, here we go. That new car smell. The decorators finished off the the break room last week, and Ruth tells me that the servers should all be online. So we're now officially up and running. System as up access. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm very used to the, those sort of emails all the time. Uh, did you know the better our facilities are, the better our chances are for developing a faster car? I mean, I would say that's pretty obvious. So, uh, the first thing we want to do. So, the first uh, weekend is the 15th of April. So, we do have a little bit of time in between now and the first race. So, let's do a, a merchandise sale. We can't do anything else at, the, at this point. Um, I think we want an advertisement campaign. Um, we probably want some power and durability focus. Um, aero and chassis focus, that looks good to me. Um, and then what have we got after that? So pre-season driver press tour or training camp. Definitely the training camp and that will work as well. So we can fit them all in before the first Grand Prix weekend. That is good. Um, what do we want to do in terms of facilities? I think possibly the aerodynamics. Let's try and get that upgraded. Of course, we haven't got that much money at the moment. I don't think we are actually going to be able to... Oh, we can upgrade the quality control in, in durability. 
nothing in uh, there. Analysis suite, so second driver's experience stat, and yeah, so that's going to be tough. Let's have a look at the R&D. So we are currently um, just about the seventh, sorry, the eighth fastest team, just behind Aston Martin. Uh, AlphaTauri a little bit ahead, Alpine a little bit ahead, Red Bull and Mercedes leading the way then, Ferrari and McLaren, Alpine, AlphaTauri then, ourselves and Aston Martin are pretty close, Alfa Romeo just behind, then Williams, then Haas, so where are we lagging behind? That's kind of where I want to, want to think about this. Um, is there any way that we can possibly look at? Uh, I think we might want to do the the chassis. Should we do the chassis? Central under tray. Let's go for that. So there, there you can see our chassis is pretty poor. So we go for that one and we get to about Alfa Romeo standard. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't think there'll be anything else out there. That we're able to get at the moment. That's fine by me. Okay, right, let's push on then. And we've got the car reveal coming up. Get a little bit of money, which is nice. A little bit of resources. So now we should be able to go into this and get ourselves some front wing end flaps. That's nice. Okay. And here's the car reveal, so strap in tight and watch the Lotus get re-revealed. So there it is then, she is a beauty, and we will get more and more sponsors throughout the season on that car. Um, we might as well continue on, get ourselves our weekly resources. I want to stay with you guys for this first little pre-season bit, just to show you what I get up to in this time. Okay, we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process. Yeah, go we'll have them with us for so... the next Grand Prix. Oh, we got an event. The department has requested your attendance at today's meeting. The personnel meeting. department has asked us to deal with this. We have a couple of options here. Take your time. What you decide to do will have consequences. Uh, I think probably getting the, the overall place of the Thanks. second driver. I know these kinds of decisions That's can be, be challenging, but I think you made the right call. I think you would have said that either way. Let's let's be honest. Uh, you don't want sucking. Uh, but there he is there, so 72 pace now, uh, which makes him 67 rated to be fair, which is about what Dan Tickton was, so that's okay. Okay, another bit of experience, which is good. Yeah, I think we're pretty Our much there now. Without issue. Ooh, we have plenty They'll of the car, uh, ready for the next race weekend. R and D points. It's a shame that I didn't go into it actually. Um, so they talked about uh, engine cover. I mean, that is a pretty good upgrade, and that will increase our performance, and it will be ready just after Portugal actually. So that's that's pretty decent. So uh, yeah, let's uh, head into. Imola, and uh, I'll take you guys on a lap round it, my first lap round it. I have actually been to this track, physically walked round it, been on the simulator, a Ferrari simulator at this track when I went uh, to Italy a few years ago. So this track is very special in my heart, so I can't wait to go around it with you. Uh, so I'll see you guys for that in just a second. Well, there's the Red Bull special livery. Morning, boss, Jeff here. Thanks again for bringing me on board. You've found a lot of talented people for this team. I can't wait to see what we can accomplish. Our journey to the Constructors' Championship starts here today, and the car is ready to head out whenever you are. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Let's have a little look. 
So we have got a track acclimatization one, so I think we will go with that. And uh, let's get out there. Let's experience Imola for the very first time on F1 2021. So this is absolutely the first time I've driven it on this game. This uh, chicane is going to be absolutely horrible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Really, really looking forward to it. If I remember, okay, I will put the video of me on the simulator. As as possible. Best of luck out there. On the end screen to this video. But uh, yeah, this bit not being a chicane now is quite nice. So here we come. Through this first sector. This is a brilliant part of the track. I really love this part. Absolutely flat out through there, and the car's feeling beautiful. Oh, a little bit wide there. That wasn't very good. Just carrying a bit too much speed. It's going to be very, very easy to lock up through there in the race and possibly make contact, but I'll tell you one thing. It's not going to be easy to overtake round here. Oh, way too wide, and there you go, invalidated lap time. It's not going to count anyway. Coming up to the chicane, which actually wasn't as bad as I thought, but we did go very wide there. And, you know, to be honest, this hasn't been the worst lap. I really was expecting a lot worse than this. This is where you guys switch the off RSL now and think, goodness up. me. Get ready to open it. Distance is on your well, there you go. We've made a little bit of contact with the wall. So that's the first lap of Imola. Hopefully, things will improve for qualifying. Well, here we come then for our first flying lap. It's been a tricky session so far, a tricky weekend, but I feel like I've found me, me stride on this circuit. We can do There's a lot better than that. That's a 117 flat, but we, we can do a lot better than that, and hopefully we will throughout this session. Well, here we go for our second flying lap. Two tenths quicker, and that's quicker than our teammate, uh, Giuliano Alesi. But uh, we are, you know, doing a decent job, really, in this car. 17th place at the moment. That's not too bad. Uh, this is going to have to be a, a cool down lap, if anything. So expect to see some rain about 10 to 15 minutes from now. So rain is coming, but uh, not just yet. So we have got one more set of boots. We'll obviously put some fuel in the car. And we'll get ready to rumble. Once again, I wonder where we can qualify. I, I reckon probably as high as 14th, really, in this car. Well, here we go. This has been a great lap. Three tenths quicker and we get up to 16th in the end uh, just ahead of our teammate Giuliano Alesi but uh, that is a pretty good first qualifying session back for Nico Hulkenberg you know maybe there was another couple of tenths in it but uh, we'll settle for that that was pretty good three today. Bottas, Norris and Sergio Perez with qualifying wrapped up we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race and there you go then, uh, just behind Kimi Raikkonen who qualifies 15th. Potentially we could have out-qualified him, but uh, I don't think we had another four tenths in, in us to really challenge the likes of Stroll, Sonoda, Vettel, etc. So yeah, that's uh, going to be an exciting race tomorrow. The first of the series and our first in F1 2021 around Imola.
No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Three point one miles of track here at Imola featuring nineteen turns, nine to the right and ten to the left. Remember that Imola differs from most other Formula One circuits as it's driven anti-clockwise. Let's hope no one forgets that today. The exit from turn 18 will probably be the setup for many of today's overtakes, leading as it does into the longest straight of the circuit and its only DRS zone. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Ricardo, Max Verstappen, and Sainz. Hamilton, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, and Charles Leclerc. Ocon, Vettel, Yuki Tsunoda, and Stroll. Raikkonen, the owner driver. Giuliano Alesi and Antonio Giovinazzi. Russell, Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Okay then, here we go for our first race of the season. Um, apparently we are going to be going soft then medium. Uh, I do th think probably that's uh, the best idea. Um, let's not try and, and be too snazzy with our strategy. If we have a little look at the race director, let's see what tyre... Well, everybody's on the soft. So let's just stick with the status quo. Let's get out there on the soft tyres. And straight away, here we go. Ready for the lights. Lights out. Away we go. Here in Imola. What a start off the grid that was. We engage the clutch now and look at this we are on the outside of our teammate as we hail towards turn one there are people all over the place here Oof, nearly went into the back of stroll there as he slowed down and now it's very high speed section of corners oh we nearly went into our teammate there that would have been an absolute disaster on debut but uh, we managed to survive the first few corners we have lost a place in fact but we are 17th and that was almost a miracle that we survived that but uh, hopefully we can now settle into the Grand Prix and make a move on the likes of Stroll but that's a bit unfortunate getting a, a corner cut and worn in there I think that's a little bit harsh uh, as we go into the very, very tight chicane, and we've got our teammate Alessi having a look, and wow, that was a little bit ambitious to say the least. While George Russell is round our outside, are we going to be able to hold him off? I think we just about have. He's made a little bit of contact with us, but There's we're been okay. An incident on track resulting in loose debris. Fortunately, the marshals have managed to clear it up in time, and there are no plans for a safety car right now. Just behind Kimi Raikkonen, are we going to be able to stay with the Iceman? Maybe even pass him. It's going to be hard work now for the rest of this Grand Prix. It's not going to be like what we had in the 10 minute F1 series where we finished fourth in Portimao because of safety car genius, but. We're just about surviving for now. We're approaching the pit window. Well, there goes George. Ru uh, sorry, Nicholas Latifi. It wasn't George Russell this time. He's gone sailing past us, and I'm not sure we got the pace to really compete with that today. Race pace of the car not feeling fantastic, but then. It is 
possibly just being around him and you know, not being used to this, not managing to set up the car properly for the race. Because it is our first race around here, and now we got Mick Schumacher having a, a little look as well, so this isn't going to be easy. As I've said, uh, you know, it is going to be a long old process, but that's what we want in my team. We don't want instant success. That's an annoying little track extension, because that could have been avoided most definitely. We're pretty good through that chicane, though. I'm very, very happy with how we're doing through there. But uh, a couple of laps away from the pit window now. Caution. Caution. Is that a yellow flag? I think it is. So I'm going to come into the pits then. Come into the pits at the end of this lap. And assume there's going to be a safety car, maybe. Charles Leclerc out of the session. But uh, maybe not, maybe not a uh, safety car, that was... Oh no, we're getting a new front wing. Oh, this is a disaster. Exit, exit now. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I came in thinking, oh, this is going to be an excellent chance to come in, get it. A fresh set of boots on, get a, okay, stay clear of the a march on the for the exit. safety car. We'll the but, uh, there you go, Leclerc is there. Uh, well, uh, our teammate just in front of us now, he okay, clear. has been quick in the clear air, so got to look after these tyres to the end of the Grand Prix now and hopefully get some success. Okay, so we've come past George Russell, who was in the pit lane. Uh, our pace is actually pretty decent in this phase of the Grand Prix, so we are managing to catch up to our teammate uh, Giuliano Alessi, apparently, but uh, definitely spell Giuliano. <laughs> Gap to car in front is two. And there's Nicholas Latifi. Are we going to be able to go down the inside of him? Oh, just about. But we got onto the curbs there. That wasn't good. Nice move. Good but job. We do just about make it past. And there he goes again. Nicholas Latifi around the outside, but we just about managed to hold him off. For now. There he goes again, Nicholas Latifi down the inside this time. We hold it round the outside on the curb and, well, we managed to force him out. Some fun racing there. There's been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. Well, Nicholas okay, Latifi clear. has just went into the back of us. I don't know what sort of incident he will have had with the people behind. Apparently not much, just a spin. But uh, that'll be frustrating for him. But for us, that's virtually guaranteed 19th place now. But uh, our teammate doing a great job, considering his incident with us. You know, cost him a lot of time. There's five laps of fuel He's, remaining. He's uh, well ahead of us on track, and... I don't think he's going to have to come into the pits again. Seconds. Yellow flag. Well, I've just been singing his praises, but he must have just done something stupid. What has just happened here? There he is. Oh, and he's, he's spun it into the gravel trap. And yeah, he's coming out. And he's going to be coming out just behind us. What a pity. What a pity for Giuliano Alessi because he's had such a, a great race. But just binned it there at the end. And we got George Russell behind. We're trying to weave. 
But there he goes down the inside and yeah, there's going to be no way we stay in front of him now. Try to stay with him, he might make a mistake. We could still regain the position. Some information on Russell. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Well, we have got a chance straight away back on George Russell. Can we make a nice clean overtake? That's the question. We go to the outside. Don't get on the grass. That's fine. Well, I was hoping to make it a nice clean overtake, but he's... Green flag. Made the, the collision there. You know, I think we had the the right of way. So basically, <laughs> we've took out all the three people that are behind us in this race. Remaining. Not our cleanest, you have to admit. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Well, final lap of the race, and uh, we're just about finding our pace again at the end of this race. Looks like we got the tyres back into the optimal window. We're not hitting the gravel as much as we're going around the corners. Just need to be super careful. Only one oh. remaining. I was going to say to not get ourselves a penalty, but there you go. There's our penalty. We've been awarded a time penalty. It will go against our finishing time at the end of the race. So how annoying. Hopefully now we, we do stay three seconds in front of Alessi. But uh, it's been a bit of a disastrous day <laughs> in the saddle. Okay, gap ahead is six but, uh, one seconds. You know, this is going to be a long process getting this team back up to where they were when they left F1 but uh, yeah I think we're going to drop out of that three second window now because of that late mistake we now hit the gravel so Alessi's going to beat us on his debut this is a disaster yeah there you go oh how annoying ok pick up rubber and bring it home Red Bull pulling out all the stops today. What a great win. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well, I'm uh, so then, very it's disappointed. It's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Max Verstappen's excellent result today sees him take over as leader of the Drivers' Championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Mick Schumacher gets my vote today. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull take over as championship leaders. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. So there you go then, we do finish behind uh... Lacey and, and they, you know that's that's annoying but uh, hopefully we can go out there and improve next time out in Portimao where of course we finished fourth <laughs> in the, in the uh, previous episode one but that's the way things go um, so yeah I'll uh, I'll continue on and we'll see what we've got in store after uh, the race Okay, so here is our weekend summary. We do uh, get a little bit of a claim. He moves up to 5, level 5. Uh, we've both had some damage deductions this weekend. That's 
not great. Um, but we do gain money overall, and we've got nearly three million in the bank now. So uh, I think next episode we will be looking at uh, increasing the team's headquarters, uh, improving the facilities a little bit. Uh, but before we do that, why don't we have a little look at uh, R and D? What could we potentially look at? I think maybe uh, an aerodynamic part uh, might be pretty good and of course uh, there is the, the chassis as well that we could have a look at um, but I, I do think having a little look at uh, some aerodynamics is going to be the way forward so let's get that in, in place hopefully for Canada that would be ideal uh, but we have got some activity time we will try and get as much in there as possible that looks pretty good for me but, uh, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it for this first episode. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for more F1 content. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.